We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, and we will begin in verse 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Very interesting passage of scripture there. The people that build their house upon sand, and they don't take heed to what God says in his word, uh, their house falls. And great is the fall of it. Well, in a strange sort of way, what we have coming here to this country with this uh, impending destruction of the dollar and uh, destruction of the debt system, it's going to be a different type of houses falling. And uh, it amazes me how much debt so many people have. And this nation... And we look around and we say, oh, we're a first world country. Well, how did we get there? Uh, through debt. That's just the way that it is. And so when you start to read in the Bible and it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It starts to make a lot more sense. And you think to yourself, oh, no, no, there's some really good times ahead, uh, Brian, that you don't understand. Um, no, there's some very bad times ahead. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, in the last days, perilous times shall come. All those different warnings in Scripture. And yet, so many people reject that. And they say, no, no, I, I think it's going to be good times. I think that uh, it's never been better. Inflation is under control. Uh, the economy's never been better. It's just been wonderful. Um, that's why we have to keep pumping trillions of dollars into it to keep it afloat. <laughs> that, that never, you know, turns out bad. It's, it's always a good thing to pump, you know, trillions of dollars into an economy. And, uh, you know, it'll just be fine. Everything's fine. Uh, no, it's not fine. And uh, I was listening to an interview the other day. And uh, Peter Schiff and... Um, oh, what's his name? Can't think of it. Todd Sachs. Sachs Realty. And uh, they were doing this interview, and they got to talking about the fact that a house is actually a depreciating asset. People say, oh, that's crazy. No, because houses are worth more over time. Houses are worth more over time because of inflation, making the price of everything go up. Okay, but a house actually is a depreciating asset, if you really study it. I never thought of it before. They said it, and I got to thinking about it. I thought, yeah, you know what? They're right. Pretty incredible. Um, this, think about it this way. If you buy a house, and you own it for 50 years and sell it, will you make more or less money? Probably you'll make more. But why did you make more money? Because you put lots of money into it. If you never, if you buy a house and for 50 years you never spend one penny on that house, uh, what kind of condition would that house be in in 50 years? I mean, we bought our place, our office, um, which we'll be heading down to very soon. Um, we bought it for $30,000, but we had to put $20,000 into the roof to fix it. All right, had to put a whole new roof on the thing because it was leaking and it was going to ruin the house. Um, well, you got a good deal. Well, then I had to spend another 20000 And if I really wanted to make it a good house, I'd have to have the wiring updated. I'd have to have the whole plumbing system redone. Um, there's a bunch of other things. And the problem is, you get to a point where it's really not worth putting money into an older place like that. I'm not going to get my return on investment, in other words. Now, if, of course, if you have a house and you love the house and you put money into it because you want to stay there. It's not an investment for you, per se. It's because you want to be there. But the whole point is, a lot of people have this notion that, you know, housing is this great investment and it just will keep getting, go higher and higher in value. Well, let me ask you another question, if that's the way you believe. What would happen if we did not have debt for our economy? The main way that you get ahead in the economy. What would happen? Would your house really go up in value if all we had 
was gold and silver coin and copper for the real low end stuff, would your house actually go up in value or would your house pretty much stay the same in value? Um, the very simple answer to that is it would pretty much stay the same. They really wouldn't go up in value too much. So, uh, take heed, brethren. <laughs> Make sure that you're not putting too much faith in the, the uh, uncertain riches of this world that come to naught. Uh, because there aren't that many good things that you can invest in. Um, that's why you're supposed to lay up treasures in heaven where thieves can't come in and steal it and rust won't get it and molds won't get it. And, you know, inflation won't destroy it. There's no such thing as inflation in God's system. Um, so, just wanted to challenge you on that. And uh, the house prices around the country, by the way, are already starting to fall. There's the uh, crazy house market. Again, just to explain some things to people, because I study this stuff a lot because we're in the market for getting a house. And a uh, whole big story there. And of course, we appreciate people's prayers on that issue. Um, but uh, if you don't understand what happened, basically back during the pandemic years, uh, 2020 to 2023, we'll say, coming up through, 2019, there were a lot of financial problems happening. Well, what they had to do, because they shut the economy down for a little while there in 2020, they had to inject a lot of money. Uh, they called it quantitative easing. And they put a whole bunch of money in, just trillions of dollars, just over and over again. Um, Donald Trump did that. And uh, said it was the strongest economy ever. Well, if it's the strongest economy ever, you don't need to inject money into it. Okay, that's rather foolish. We have to inject money into it to keep it going because it's a strong economy. No. Um, and they wanted to get liquidity. The bank has to be able to have people's money coming in so that they can lend it out to other people and have money coming in and lend it out and money coming in and lend it out. That's why they lend out money. And so they started to lower interest rates way down, you know, 2%, 3%, like that. And they started to encourage people, send people stimulus checks, go out and get, get a house. It's never been a better time. It's a good housing market. And a lot of people just became very greedy. And uh, I've told the story before, but there was a local business slash property in the area here. And they were charging $750,000 for it. And the woman that owned the place, she said uh, about, she said, oh, you know, they, somebody said, oh, you know, you're selling your place. And she said, yeah. And they said, what are you asking for? And she said, 750,000. And she said, oh, it's not worth anywhere near that. Well, then why are you charging that? Well, that's right, because it was the uh, get rich quick thing. A lot of people uh, became very greedy, inc incredibly greedy during that time. Well, some people really cashed out. You know, they sold their places for these inflated prices because of all the panic thing and people uh, bidding over asking price and all that other crazy stuff people were doing. So some people it worked out very well. Others, not so much so. But uh, now the insurance or the uh, interest rates are going back up again. And uh, by the way, the around right around the average for interest rates, historically speaking, is about 7%, which is right about where we're at right now, 7 to 8% interest rate. Um, so it's not high. And people say, well, it was a lot higher in the past and people could afford it. Yes, because incomes were higher and house prices were lower. Look at the median house price now compared to back in the 1980s and the income level com you know, now compared to back then. Again, you know, these, these spin doctors uh, in mainstream media, um, what they do is they deceive you. They trick people with all these little number tricks and little things that they do. Oh, it's low inventory. That's why prices are up. No, it's people being greedy. People asking outrageous prices. You know, always, if you're looking at a property, always look at the tax assessed value. And I've seen places in this area that are 10 times more asking price than the assessed value. The one in particular I'm thinking of right now, it's 498,000 that they're asking. Assessed value is $53,000. That's nearly 10 times more 
then it's actually assessed at and it's actually worth according to the town so um, be very careful right now if you're looking for a house because there's a lot of scams going on right now um, but the whole point of this video getting back to it again is Lord talking this this thing about people building on sand and that the fall of their house was great and you can make that house an actual physical house you can make it their home their or their family name the house of Denlinger you know for me um, but uh, I can you can also apply it to this whole situation a lot of people are going to lose everything uh, the Federal Reserve I think said here the San Francisco Federal Reserve said that um, Americans will be out of money by the end of the year they're depleting their savings at such a rate you know and you get all these other statistics and, and of course you have to be careful with statistics because those can be very much contrived as well um, you know I uh, always think about it this way um, all the statistics say this and so many percent and says this did they ask you <laughs> and the, if they didn't ask you then well they aren't counting you as a number um, and of course you know statistical science is often paid for by the people who want to prove something you know the vast majority of Americans no longer believe in creation science who came out with that well uh, some evolutionary professor or something at some evolutionary school <laughs> yeah as an example okay I'm not citing an actual article or whatever else but that's the kind of stuff that you get you know you get uh, the medical establishment saying that the vast majority of people are for the things or it works in most of the time and whatever else yeah because it's uh industry funded science look out for that so um <laughs> just be careful brethren out there there's a lot of scams a lot of things that are going on and a lot of houses that are going to fall and they're going to fall very great because they were built on sand um they're built on man-made thoughts and philosophies and not on the solid common sense of the scriptures uh, the bible says that we're to owe no man anything and yet most people owe you know and owe a lot they're buried in debt what happened how did the wealth of the american people get stolen from them and the past people had more money and now all of a sudden people don't have any money how did that happen debt based so do your best to pay down your debts um, especially with what's coming again I did that video about the great taking uh, I don't know when that's going to happen or if they'll do it exactly as he was saying in the book but um, if it happens if the bankers come out and say repay your loans or we'll take what you owe money on a lot of people are going to be in very serious trouble there will be a lot of ho homeless people Perilous times shall come, the Bible says about the end times. And it's getting more perilous by the day right now. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to see that house prices are going to get very cheap. They'll probably be giving them away in the future because the other issue will be being a depreciating asset. Um, the houses, you have to fix them up. And I've seen some of these places in... Uh, New England up here and you'll see places in Vermont or New Hampshire and these big huge beautiful homes you know six seven thousand square feet and um, and I think to myself I remember this one place and had uh, it was actually here in Maine it was I think right around seven thousand square feet I saw this thing had 500 acres of land it was I think a million and a half dollars or something you know 1.5 million in other words and um, and I looked at it and I could see the lane needed repair, the driveway needed repairs, and it looked like the the roofing needed repaired. And I thought, okay, you know, so you buy the place for one and a half million dollars, and then how do you fix up the roof on a place like that? Seven thousand square foot house, and the roof needs to be replaced? Probably be a you know another hundred or two hundred thousand just to fix the roof. And then what about plumbing issues? What about wiring? What about, you know, whatever else? Oh, it's, it's got some structural damage or whatever. One more story here before I go. Uh, there was a documentary I saw years ago and they were talking about the, um, 
the big auto uh, heads of the auto industry out in Detroit, Michigan. And they talked about these huge big mansions that these guys built. And just gigantic places, you know, 12,000 square feet or something, huge mansions. And they said that a lot of these places fell into disrepair and it was literally, they were upside down essentially. They were, it would, it would cost more to fix it than it would be to buy it. Um, it was insane. And so these houses were just abandoned and just gone. And you can see there's whole channels on YouTube. I don't recommend wasting much time watching that stuff, but you can see it if you're curious. Um, there's whole channels on YouTube going around showing luxury hotels and luxury mansions and everything just abandoned. Why? Because it's a depreciating asset. The second law of thermodynamics, if you want to get scientific about it, and I do believe in the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, uh, everything breaks down over time. I'll just show you an example here. This is an old reefer trailer we have on our property. And guess what? It's breaking down. Look at the rust here and everything. Um, it's not in the best shape anymore. Bought it for very cheap. You can see here the paint's coming off. Used to be orange. Now it was painted over as white. And um, it's a depreciating asset. Everything that you purchase is a depreciating asset. Except for one thing. King James Bible. Uh, yes, the pages will start to get old and they'll start to fall apart and whatever. But uh, what you read and when you follow it, that's eternal. And uh, you will be rewarded in heaven for following that King James Bible. So, enough ranting for now. Um, but just make sure that you set your affections on things above, not on things on this earth. Because it's all breaking down. It's all going to burn someday. Uh, at the end of the thousand year kingdom of Jesus Christ. You can read about that. Revelation chapter 20. When the Lord comes back down and he's physically reigning on the earth. Don't believe anything else. It's not. Well there is no kingdom. We're kind of just in it now. All millennial. No. Uh, Post millennial. Man brings in the thousand year kingdom. Yeah right. <laughs> and then Jesus shows up at the end. No. Uh, Premillennial is the only thing that you can believe in if you are a Bible-believing Christian. So, all right, need to get to the office. So I'll stop talking now, and I'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.